Welcome to episode 13, which of course is an unlucky number, so let's see if we can keep our unbeaten streak going. Also, it said many teams are still left undefeated. As a matter of fact, it is actually only two. We are still undefeated and so are the Falcons, but that is it. And when we're done with these two games here, and more importantly actually, it's worth pointing out, and I think I said this at the last one, it's actually still a close race here in the division. Two games in it. If we lose, of course, to the Ravens, we're actually, there. we're going to be six and one, they're going to be five and two, so it really closes that down but when we've played these two games against the Ravens and we have to go to the Ravens which is going to be difficult and hosting the Cardinals then we will be able to take a look at the projections for the end of season awards which obviously is always interesting to see the first time you get a chance see if we're up for any if any players are up for any we've obviously got an absolutely incredible defense right now offense is also clicking on all cylinders we're playing very well and let's see if we can keep this going in Baltimore. So the goals this week, no more than two sacks, 300 yards total offense and the rest. So it's a rainy day here in Baltimore and the defense got us the ball pretty quickly. Ravens started getting no points. Let's see what we can get going here. And we start with a run. Christian McCaffrey picks up a few. So we're currently just trading empty possessions. I think it's got to be the weather right now because nobody's doing anything. Let's see if we can run the ball a little better. Could have kept that one, but there's a huge hole for Christian McCaffrey who fumbles the ball. Why does he always fumble the ball? Every time he has a chance for a big play, he makes a stupid cut or fumbles the ball, or in this case, does both. Look, he had a chance, just go straight ahead. And why does he go right? Why does he go right, get himself hit and fumble the ball? They take it in for a touchdown. Second and 10 looks like we can, oh, look at that. There we go, McCaffrey. Now don't do anything stupid, okay? Just keep running. He gets tackled, he's not fast enough to just get straight to the end zone, but it's good enough, it's a big gain, it's not a fumble, and we're, we've reset everything. Nobody's done anything bad, that's a reset for McCaffrey, we're alright. Do this right, McCaffrey. Come on, McCaffrey, oh, for flipping it. Why does normal running not work? Three and the ball back without them scoring isn't bad whatsoever. This defense is on point today. And let's just start with a simple run, reading it right, not trying to force anything. There you go, McCaffrey. Nine yards is good, but again, you made a stupid cut. See what we get here? We're looking at Crowder, who we don't throw to as often as we maybe should. And that is why we should throw to him more often. I don't know. He's not going to go all the way. I was going to say, I don't think he will. But that is a big time run and catch from him. Or rather, a catch and run. So first and goal now at the six. McCaffrey. There we go. There you go. Oh, he's at the one. Right, you get one chance, McCaffrey, and then we're going to pass it in for a touchdown. It should work. In theory, it should work. You just need to... There you go, McCaffrey. Huge hole. <laughs> Why did he dive? <laughs> he took the wrong side and d dove in. But let's take a look. Look. He went around the outside when he should have cut it in a long time ago. You can see where the hole is. But we'll take it. Fair enough. He gets the rushing touchdown. I think it's his first in a long time, to be fair. So we've got deep, to be fair, if they play us short, but we've also got short if they let us have it, and they did let us have it, and Delaney Walker's got all day to run before he even sees a well, purple shirt. There we go, couldn't think of the colour the Ravens play in. Here we go. I said earlier we don't look to Crowder enough. I'll tell you someone we haven't looked at at all today. It's our man Coleman, and he's going to be open there. That one's... Oh, he came back for it. I think we don't get the first down. So what I can do is pretend that we didn't turn over the ball on fourth down because we didn't get the first down and we're just here now. What actually happened is we did turn over the ball on fourth down. We shouldn't have had it. We actually just went into hurry up mode. Probably really annoyed the coach. Missed our throw there and we got a turnover from the defense so we're back in the same spot anyway. Looks like everybody was so impressed with McCaffrey's run the last time they're going to give him it again. All right, there you go, McCaffrey. Find that hole. Oh, McCaffrey did not expect that to happen. That was, that was beautiful. That's what we want to see every single time. Look at him. Didn't even go wide. Just followed the blocks perfectly. Wow. We don't see that too often, but when it happens, it's worth it. Just bomb it downfield. See what happens. It's late. And, well. Now, in terms of stats, that really didn't make any sense. In terms of the down, it didn't really make much sense either but at the end of the day it's just that actually it's a very good punt at the 10 yard line like i said didn't make any sense i just wasn't feeling the drive felt happy to take a stupid shot so i did should i have done probably not mccaffrey go mccaffrey go don't put your hand out just run <laughs> now he's not super super fast so who knows if he actually would have got away from everyone anyway but i'm sure he slowed himself down 
by pulling the Heisman post too early. And again, another big hole. This time he doesn't pull the hand out and still gets caught from behind. So yeah, we, we know he's not the fastest. Third and five. This guy doesn't play for first down. He plays for touchdown. Okay, there's nothing there. Throw it away. Come on. You took one of the sacks you're not supposed to take. You were supposed to throw it away. We also need to throw a touchdown because we have... Um... Oh, damn. Corey Coleman was open. We'll just have to take it here. And get out of bounds. Untouched. So, trying to get a passing touchdown because we've thrown one interception. We've got to at least be even on the day. I mean, we've still got plenty of time to do it. But, you know, the earlier you think about it, the earlier you'll get it done. Nothing. Throwing to Delaney Walker, who went out of bounds, wasn't really expecting anything, probably shouldn't have thrown it. So first and 10 at the 17, we've got ourselves some new downs, and we look to our man here, Crowder. Can he cut it off? Oh, I thought he was in. He made the defender miss, but went out of bounds. Now that we tried at least once, we can look to... Yeah, we go, there we go. Easy, easy, easy with Crowder for the touchdown, and we get ourselves a passing touchdown as well. So now we've got one touchdown to one interception. If we get another one, we're two for one and it's all good. So as long as we now just run the ball and never pass again, we won't take more than two sacks. See, it's actually quite easy. Oh no. Just throw it out. That was, oh wow, how? I, I mean, that flag's probably gonna take it away from us. <laughs> I've not seen that happen. And we're all tied now. The Ravens coming down, scoring another touchdown, which I've got to say, I'm pretty annoyed at the defense for, because why are you letting them score all the points now? Hand off the ball to McCaffrey, though, and he's got another big hole. McCaffrey with the first down. All we need to do is slowly move down, run that clock down, and we might be all right. Look at that wide open Delaney Walker. He wants it. He gets it. He's got the first down, goes out of bounds, which, you know, as we're trying to run the clock out. But actually, that saves us some time there. So we are in... All right field goal position right now. This is all right. We'd, we'd settle for this. However, Christian McCaffrey going up the middle. Now we're in very good field goal range and a chance to really run this clock down to leave them just crumbs. A first down here finishes it for the Ravens pretty much. They'll have used all their timeouts. And we couldn't get it. We couldn't get it, and they saved themselves an entire minute. That's bad. Going normal speed now. We never usually look at this, but we're going to have to see what happens. A one-yard reception. 53 seconds left. James White is injured. A nine-yard reception. James White, who was just injured, makes the reception. 34 seconds left. They're nowhere close. 31 seconds left. They're still on, I don't even know where. 22-yard reception. 17 seconds left. Four-yard rush. 10 seconds left on the 43-yard line. A sack by Emmanuel Ogba to win the game for us. Although they weren't really in field goal range either. But Emmanuel Ogba wins the game. So let's take a look at these stats then. We got 237 passing yards, 69% completion percentage. It's a nice number. I mean, in terms of, it's a good number of passes completed. I think, shut up. Rushing, Christian McCaffrey, 20 attempts, 143 yards, 7.1 yards per carry, two touchdowns. And they were two real touchdowns in the red zone going in for a touchdown rather than having to break one big because we don't tend to run it down there. Lamar Jackson, six carries for 47 yards, wasn't bad. Delaney Walker, five receptions, 69 yards. Christian McCaffrey, four receptions, 39 yards. Jamison Crowder, four for 71 and a touchdown. Corey Coleman, three for 25 and Terrell Pryor, two for 33. So we're spreading it out there. Everyone's getting a good chance. Defense, Rashad Dawson leading the team in tackles. And then next up was cornerback Jamar Taylor, and then cornerback Trey Wayne. Sacks, one and a half for Emmanuel Ogba, that all-important sack that won us the game pretty much. Ryan Anderson with a half sack as well. An interception by Byron Jones, which is nice. Remember that one down at the 17-yard line. And we win a game that was very, very close. It was rainy, it was horrible, but we take it 30-27. to 27. So we got out of that one alive, just barely... And now we meet the Cardinals, who were no, you know, pushover either, 5-2. and two. So let's get into this game against the Cardinals. Hot off, you know, a hot and cold performance in some ways. More just um, post-snap decision-making on my part. 
So let's see if we can make up for those few mistakes against these Cardinals. The goals this week, 75% touchdowns in the red zone and no turnovers. I think we can do that, we'll just stay out of the red zone. Now if I remember correctly, some of our worst games have come when the goal was 75% touchdowns in the red zone. So let's hope that's not the case for this one. And if we do our second target, no turnovers, it shouldn't be a problem. So the Cardinals straight down for seven points. That's not usually what we see from the defense. They at least hold them to three, but that's not the case here. And we start with a run and a run to McCaffrey who finds himself some space, runs over the first guy trying to tackle him. Five yards isn't bad. Third and five, looking for a first down before we let the Cardinals really, you know, get a jump start on us. Let's see what we get here. We've got McCaffrey over the middle as long as he... Oh, that's going to be close. I was ready there to jump into no huddle and just force it for the first, but we didn't have to do that. We get it anyway. Let's run the ball here. McCaffrey again. You know, he's getting a couple of yards per carry. Okay, this is interesting, but let's see. Oh, it's going to be close here. We get the first down though, although he did fall back over the first down marker. This is what was necessary. Quick, 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 quick. There we go, Walker. We had to go for a fourth down. We go for the no huddle because we knew coach wouldn't give us it. And we get the first down. It's a risky play. Really blow up in your face if you don't get it. But we had to. Terrell Pryor in the slot. Just taking advantage of cornerbacks who shouldn't be covering guys like Terrell Pryor. And we get the first down. And it's first and goal at the 10. So we're in the red zone now. It's time to throw a touchdown because we need that percentage. So last week reminded me we don't look at Crowder enough. That's not to say we're going to force anything to him. But come on. No, it was just short. We shouldn't have. Why? I even said this beforehand. when I shouldn't have tried to go in head first. I think slide, but I refuse to do it. And every time I try and do this red zone completion percentage thing, because I'm trying to get the touchdowns, it blows up in my face, and that's exactly what happens there. Let's hope the defense bails us out. There's no excuse for a play like that either. I know I should be sliding. It's, it's the arrogance of thinking... Then I can... No! Oh, I messed it up. 14 to nothing. We're messing up. It's that red zone completion percentage. Garbage. And there was an open receiver we just didn't throw to. I'm telling you, it's a curse. You get that goal, you know you're going to have a bad game. It just wants you to fail. Get it out quickly to Pryor. Go, Pryor. Third and eight. Come on. Give us some in here. There you go, Walker. Oh, come on. That was just stupid. That was... That was not going to go for a first down from the second he made the cut. Stop with the short plays, coach. We're down. We need to get downfield. Oh, no. Oh, look at that catch. I said, oh, no, but no. Crowder comes in. See, coach? I said it. And I think it's a it's a nice idea to um try and go a bit deeper, do you? Don't, you know, at 30 seconds, give up on us. Go, go, go. Time out, time out, time out. We've got this. We've got this. We can get a touchdown. Looking at Crowder, the guy who got us down here, but also looking to the right. Nope, Crowder, the guy who got us down here and gets a touchdown before the half is over. And we get the ball back to start the second half as well. And from, you know, coach trying to give us plays to run out the clock with 30 seconds left, we turn it into a touchdown down here with some audibles with a very gutsy throw that worked out thanks to a great catch by Crowder. So, second half. Score 7 to 17, but if we go down here and score a touchdown, it actually is pretty alright. It's a three point game, and if the defense steps up too, we'll be alright. Alright, defense, that's what we needed a turnover. Excellent. Basically, moves us down the field to where we couldn't get ourselves. A handoff to McCaffrey, who actually managed to fight for a few more yards, but running against not really working. Alright, in this situation, we've got to check the outside straight away. Not really working. That was not a fumble. Look at this, Lyman, go! <laughs> he was trying. All right, what can we get here? I think we're going to have to think about our man, Corey Coleman. No, they played it exactly where they needed to. That was just a terrible read of the zone. We have to try some different things here. There's some stuff isn't working right now. Delaney Walker on that one, though, picks us up a first down. So maybe we just need to move away from our base plays and think a little bit more outside the box. Second and 12 now after a not very successful run. Delaney Walker wide open. There we go. We just need to get Delaney Walker in some different looks and we'll do all right. I think the problem is we're playing to their strong side. If we play this same play away from their best players, we can get a first down at least there to Delaney Walker. We've got to stay away from Patrick Peterson. The guy ruins all our plays. All right, we're going with the play that worked the last time. 
There it is. It's going to work again. And another touchdown for Jamison Crowder. He's the guy we need to look to today. He's been making play after play. Another touchdown in the red zone. We're currently at 60%. So one more touchdown and we've got our objective. And we've made it a three-point game as well. Well, four-point game right now. Defense, that is the absolute last thing we needed for you to let them get a touchdown there. Looking kind of deep, didn't even have a chance, but a flag there. It may be a face mask. Potentially look like a face mask. Yeah, we go. This one could work. Yes, it could. Yes, it could work. There you go, Crowder again. He's out of bounds where he could have cut it up, but we'll take it. And we're in the red zone again. Here we go, touchdown time. Come on, Crowder, let's make it three. Can we make it three? We're also thinking about Coleman, mind, so we're not, we're not selling out to one guy. We're also thinking about Coleman. And there's Coleman for the touchdown. It's, it's still, we're still behind, but it's still a game. Defense needs to step up for this one, though. Defense didn't step up. We can't blame the defense, but we lose by three points. Three points that we could have got, at least if we hadn't fumbled it. First trip down to the red zone. We could have maybe even had more. So it's not to say the blame is on the defense, but as we started to get it back, they didn't. Again, not blame the defense. Clearly, enough mistakes that we made. It was close and we lose our unbeaten streak at seven. But for the Cleveland Browns to go seven games without losing, that is something to hold on to for a very long time. So, 272 yards, 70% completion percentage, three touchdowns, one interception. Rushing Christian McCaffrey, we couldn't get anything going today. 10 attempts for 24 yards, 2.4 yards per carry. Jamison Crowder, though, tried everything. Six receptions, 85 yards, two touchdowns. Jerome Pryor, five for 79. Delaney Walker, five for 86. Corey Coleman, two for 16, and a touchdown. Everybody tried. It just ended up being not enough. Rashad Dawson is tied with Ryan Anderson, Joe Hayden, Miles Garrett, and Jabril Peppers for the lead for the tackles today. No sacks. I guess that doesn't help either. No interceptions. Jamie Collins got a forced fumble. So did Jamar Taylor, but only one recovery. I think that's the problem. The, you know, turnovers, okay, you can't always expect a load, but the fact we had no sacks, that's not going to work. It's a, it was such a close game. It's so annoying. We won by three points last week. We lose by three points this week. I guess it takes the pressure off though. Now we're no longer thinking about unbeaten, undefeated. We're just thinking about playoffs and beyond. So there we have it. We're now seven and one. It's, it was a horrible game to lose. We lose it at home as well, but at least it was close and we didn't just get blown out and lose our unbeaten streak. Seven and one is still very good. Let's move on to the bye week. And now we should be able to take a look at what the end of season awards look like at this point. And as we can see, it's still a decent lead over our division rivals here. The Steelers are 5-2. and two. We then play the Jets and the Steelers. So for MVP, we are second behind Devontae Freeman. And he's also there with Matt Ryan in for it. So I don't know what Devontae Freeman's doing. And the Falcons are still undefeated, which I'm sure helps him in that voting. If they lose one game, I don't know if then technically we do might have a better chance. I think it factors into it, but we're there. MVP is a topic of conversation. Coach of the year, it's between Dan Quinn and Hugh Jackson. So that's, you know, it's right there with the two teams that were undefeated, the Falcons now still undefeated. But right now we're not gonna win anything and that's not very fun. So maybe we need to start doing some more fancy things, throwing some more touchdowns, rushing for some more yards, doing everything. But, you know, I'm as disappointed as I am, I'm glad the weight of the pressure of being undefeated is off our shoulders. Although the Falcons are still undefeated, so I'm a little jealous of that. And next week we'll try and keep it going and see if we can get into the playoffs, which looks right now pretty obvious. But if we lose all the rest of the games, obviously we could still leave. Worst we can do right now is 7-9, and nine, and that could leave us outside looking in. But we would have to lose 8 games in a row. And although technically, you know, you wouldn't be that surprised if it happened to us, we are the Cleveland Browns. With this team, you wouldn't expect it. <laughs>